Merry Christmas. Can you think of a better way to spend your Christmas night than by watching a taped edition of SmackDown? Well, if you can't, then you're listening to my review of SmackDown, which was taped last week from Fresno, California, the same location that the previous week SmackDown was taped. And this was done uh, to tape two shows back-to-back to to allow the main roster and the production crew to spend Christmas with their families and their loved ones, which was a great thing for WWE to do. And they definitely owed it to them because last year they, uh, they made them work Christmas Day and they made them work New Year's Day. So that was really shitty of WWE to do to make... um, You know, just the whole everyone, not just, you know, the wrestlers, but everyone, you know, who works on Raw and SmackDown, the creative crew, production, uh, just everyone, you know, that that really sucked that uh, they took out away from them last year. So definitely made it up to them. And uh, taping not just Christmas, they're also going to tape New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So that's also really uh, definitely a good thing for WWE to make it up to their talents. So uh, this show, they had all the Christmas decorations up, just like they did for all that. All the Christmas trees, it's like a Christmas smackdown. It is a smackdown Christmas edition, so they're doing Christmas specials. All, every other TV show does you know, Christmas specials and stuff, so it makes sense for them to do that. They have r truth dressed up as Santa Claus, and his assistant Carmella make her out to, to the ring. Carmella's looking really good uh, in her, um, her Christmas attire. And uh, they uh, they basically do is it's the same stuff, just, you know, true dress as Santa Claus. And then finally, what happens is, uh, you know, they try to do this carol break instead of the dance break, but then Daniel Bryan interrupts. And then he, uh, I don't know if it's a good idea for to have Daniel Bryan uh, with that, this kind of a comedy crew as the WWE champion. He calls them fickle a whole bunch of times, and he's ex- here to expose the, the real Santa Claus. And then uh, he's basically, uh, you know, He's uh, ripping into them, and he's ripping into Santa Claus and the North Pole and how everything's going to melt. And it's really comedy, and I don't know if I really like this, um, mainly because I just feel like Daniel Bryan shouldn't be doing this as the WWE champion. His character kind of is a comedy actor. He's kind of like this crazy, obsessive tree hugger. But I think this, I don't know. I, I guess it's just a Christmas edition. Maybe it shouldn't be taken too stretch, but I don't know. I don't think he should be doing this. Um, they, uh, Daniel Bryan, uh, beats down our truth and then he puts him in the heel hook and, uh, you know, Carmella's concerned. So I hope they're not actually going to do anything with them, like as a feud. So they had Mustafa Ali face Andrade Cien Almas, uh, with Zelina Vega. And there's also some news there because on, there's reports that Andrade Almas is uh, reportedly unhappy with his position in the WWE. Dave Meltzer reportedly said that, uh, there was a top lucha star who wanted to go to the WWE, but he was, uh, basically, decided not against it because uh, the, one of his closest friends, who's also a uh, a luchador, is extremely unhappy in the WWE. He never said who it was, but there were some other websites who kind of put two and two together, and it seems like that's Andrade Almas, who seems to be unhappy, and you can understand why. He was a big star. Zelina Vega, I think, made him a bigger star. I think Zelina Vega is a huge part of his act. I think without Vega, he is boring as fuck, and that's how I always thought about him in NXT, but... I can understand his frustration. I just I mean, hope they don't. I, just, I hope they like give Zelina a role, like make her a star, because she she has so much. But um, Ali was obviously gonna win. Uh, he gets the win here, and then they go to the back. Um, he uh, they had Samoa Joe and Jeff Hardy, and I just I hate this stuff. I don't know. I hate how they're using Samoa Joe. I don't care. It's like Jeff Hardy's probably gonna win. I don't care about this rivalry. Up next, you had Jimmy uh, Jay Uso and. Uh, Timming with Giles and Anderson against Jameis, Cesaro, and Sanity. It ends with actually Carl Anderson gets the win. Uh, his, he gets the win for his team. So it seems like pushing Giles and Anderson. Maybe they're going to have a feud with Sheamus and Cesaro soon. And Sheamus and Cesaro will obviously win. Maybe that's it for Giles and Anderson. Maybe they go and they leave and they go to that All Elite Wrestling. Because I think they'll be like the first ones to leave WWE. They have nothing there. They show Mustafa Ali backstage. Uh, They show uh, him uh, shaking Shelton Benjamin's hand, who you might forget Shelton Benjamin's even still with the WWE. And then Daniel Bryan beats down uh, Mustafa Ali. He jumps him. He jumps in the back. He will try to break it up. He gets him back. 
Then they had probably one of my least favorite segments was Miz TV. So the Miz is out, and his guest is Shane McMahon. No surprise. And what this whole thing is is like the Miz uses his father. He keeps talking about how his father was never proud of him. It's like if you see some of the specials WWE has done with the Miz, uh, like the uh, like kind of the YouTube specials, they show the Miz's father. His parents are both very proud. He talks about how his dad after WrestleMania 27. Uh, when he beat John Cena, he says, well, you got help from The Rock. Well, I think to myself, you just had the shittiest main event in WrestleMania history. <laughs> I wouldn't be proud of my son if he had the worst main event of all time in the history of WrestleMania after that match. Fuck, I wouldn't be proud of you either, Miz. And uh, he like he uses his dad. It's just, oh, I hated this. I did not like this at all. And uh, I almost got the feeling that The Miz is supposed to be a babyface and Shane's supposed to be the heel. But Shane's the one who looks good in this, and the Miz is the one who looks like a complete and utter idiot. So it's like this is kind of what they always do, anyways. Um, I did not like this. Eventually, what happens is uh, the Miz keeps using the fans as hell. The fans decide uh, if we're going to be a tag team or not. He keeps using them, and eventually he uh, puts his hand out for Shane, and then uh, Shane eventually agrees. He says, "If you screw this up, it's on you." And Shane McMahon agrees to team up with the Miz. I guess the Miz and Shane are a tag team now. That kind of sucks, to be quite honest. I'm not looking forward to that at all. Um, I don't want to see that. Uh, yeah, that, that really, I'm not interested in that. But I think they're going to get a feud. I don't know if they're going to have a match at WrestleMania. But it's very possible. It looks like that's the direction they're about to head in right now with uh, the Miz and um, and Shane. They're gonna put a lot of energy into this. They, uh, this is gonna be a program. I think it's probably this is, the, this is a WrestleMania match. Probably, unfortunately. They had Rusev in the back. He talks about his match against Nakamura. We all know he's gonna win. I mean, it's well known. So up next is Jeff Hardy against Samoa Joe. Uh, what happens is uh, Jeff Hardy snaps. Joe gets in his head. The whole thing I'm telling is Jeff Hardy is this back in its high morph where Samoa Joe is CM Punk and Joe is using Jeff Hardy's personal demons and same stuff. Uh, the, the Hardy Punk feud was the best feud of 2009. But this whole three creation of Samoa Joe, it's just not working for me. I'm not into it at all. I think it's like they've done so much damage to Samoa Joe. They had him lose so many matches. And it's like, he, when he loses to AJ Styles five times in a row on pay-per-view or whatever, it's just kind of not a big deal anymore. I'm not a big fan of this robbery. I just kind of want this to be over. Um, Joe wins by DQ because Hardy snapped. And then uh, Hardy is attacking Joe, but then Joe hits him in the cocaine clutch and like Hardy passes out. They had a Nakamura promo, which was uh, pretty much uh, taped. So, I mean, he literally can just phone it in. I mean, I'm surprised he even does that. I mean, I'm surprised he don't just have a Nakamura audio because that's all he's done. They announced John Cena's back on next week's SmackDown. I don't know if he's going to be on Raw and SmackDown, but he's going to be on next week's show, which will be taped also. They show the Usos uh, walking back, and they say Jimmy's going to look for Naomi. And then uh, they show Mandy Rose and Selena Deville, and they stop Jimmy, and they mention her under the mistletoe, and then Naomi comes in, but she goes after them, but Jimmy holds her back. I guess they're going to do something with Naomi against Mandy Rose. That looks, looks like what they're building to. I don't know who her tag team partner is going to be, because they're going to build Mandy Rose and Selena Deville because the new tag champs, uh, that new you know, tag division, they're going to have to build now since they announced it on Raw. They're going to go into that direction for sure. Up next, Rusev and Shinsuke Nakamura for the U.S. title. Had a lengthy match. You had a commercial break. It went on for a while. They had uh, two commercial breaks, actually. It was a long match. It was very well. It was pretty good. Um, I mean, Nakamura's just boring. He phones it in, but Rusev gets the win. Uh, he hits the wins at the Machka kick. He is a champ. I like how they celebrate. They had Lana really selling it. She's hugging Rusev. She's almost in tears. Rusev selling it like he's, you know, he's won everything. I don't know why they didn't just do this when Rusev Day was super over. They should have done this at WrestleMania this year. In the Superdome in New Orleans, that's when they should have done that at WrestleMania. Like, have him win the title. It's an amazing moment. He's the U.S. champ. And then you can have Lana celebrate with him if you want. It would have been just an incredible moment. The crowd goes nuts. Easiest match to book. They didn't do that. They went Jinder Mahal. And then Rusev sunk into, you know just kind of became irrelevant and now he's champ it's like the Bruce of day it's too late 
It is what it is. Same old shit. So uh, then the, the final segment. I think this is a segment they clearly did not show for the live audience. There's definitely a lot of stuff with that too. There was a lot of stuff that uh, they, they didn't show to the live audience on Raw too. There's Because you can see the reports. There was nothing new with this. But they show AJ Styles in the back. He's walking and then Vince McMahon calls him into his office. He talks to Vince. And Vince is being nice to him at first. And Vince is mad at him. He's pointing his finger at his chest saying, You need to be an animal. You've allowed Daniel Bryan to take over your house. And, you know, he's really firing up AJ. And eventually, like, he says something to AJ and he slaps him in the face. AJ gets mad and he punches Vince McMahon down. Vince takes it with his own bump, which looks horrible. Vince is down. He's been knocked out. And, like, he just doesn't really sell it much. He, the show ends up Vince on the ground just being punched out. It was like, really? This is where we're going? I was afraid I don't have to see AJ and Shane McMahon again, but this is where we're going. I think AJ is going to get a big feud. I think the match, there was a report that the match might be AJ and Randy Orton at WrestleMania. I can definitely see that, maybe for the title. Uh, but that's clearly, uh, they have a lot planned for AJ. Maybe he wants a belt back from Daniel Bryan, but... That's how the final SmackDown of uh, 2018 ends. This is the last SmackDown of the year, even though uh, the show will be taped uh, in uh, on four days. On uh, this Saturday, it's going to be taped. Uh, it will air on the first, but this was the last SmackDown that will air in 2018. So uh, the final SmackDown. SmackDown, definitely the better show than Raw this year. And, uh, you know, it, it was fine. Just tonight's show was a cool ending, so I'll give it that. With, uh, I even don't like to see Vince take a bump anymore. But with that said, again, uh, Christmas is almost over. You know, I hope everyone had a great Christmas. I hope you spent it with your loved ones and your family members and your closest people in your life. And uh, I hope everyone had a, uh, just a great Christmas. And I wish everyone enjoys their holiday break. Enjoy the new year. It's uh, just... Uh, to keep on going, uh, you know, I do wrestling reviews, but also, you know, I'm happy you guys uh, check out my YouTube channel. I'm happy you support me, and I'm really grateful for that. So uh, for that, I thank you, and uh, once again, Merry Christmas, and uh, wish all of you a good night.